The movie begins with a slightly hunchback woman named Maud painting on a wall. It seems as though her disability makes it really hard for her to even perform the slightest of tasks. But despite the troubles, Maud continues to create beautiful art. The scene now shifts to Maud lighting a cigarette outside her aunt's house. Meanwhile, inside the house, her aunt Ida and her brother Charles seem to be having a very serious discussion. While conversing, Charles insists that Ida look after Maud, despite the latter's reluctance. Just as the two are talking, Maud steps inside the house and excitedly greets Charles. She is absolutely delighted to see him. Maud goes on to ask her brother if he's there to take her home. Hearing this, Charles and Ida just look at each other. A while later, Charles gently informs Maud that he won't be taking her home. He then proceeds to direct Maud's attention to some stuff that he had brought with him. The latter is quite excited at first, but as she takes a closer look, she immediately recognizes that those are her belongings from her parents' house. Maud isn't happy about this, and so she sternly asks Charles about it. After her inquiry, Maud learns that her brother has sold the house. Needless to say, Maud feels betrayed and confronts Charles. However, the latter doesn't even bother paying attention to her. He simply ignores Maud and proceeds to leave. As he's leaving, Maud desperately follows him in denial. At that moment, Charles turns around and says his final goodbye before making his way towards his car. Clearly heartbroken, Maud stands on the porch and watches him drive away. Just then, Ida approaches her from behind and sternly advises her to go to her room. It is clear that she has no consideration for how Maud is feeling. Seeing that there's no one to understand her, Maud becomes enraged and yells at Ida to just leave her alone. She then sits on the porch swing while going through all her belongings. Later that night, Maud patiently sits on her bed, waiting for Ida to go to her room. It appears as though she is planning on sneaking out. Shortly after, she walks outside, towards a dance hall, while smoking a cigarette. She then sneaks inside the hall, enjoying and drinking all by herself. A while later, Maud quietly sneaks back into the house and carefully walks up the stairs in order to avoid getting caught. However, that's when the lights turn on, with Ida standing before her. Ida confronts Maud, asking the latter if she went to the club again. However, Maud doesn't even give a straight answer as she's clearly drunk. Stumbling on her feet, Maud goes on to explain that she only went there to make friends. Ida clearly isn't happy, which makes her recall a previous incident that took place when she visited there. However, Maud simply ignores Ida and taunts her before slowly entering her room. This conversation between Ida and Maud suggests that Maud has a history with clubbing that Ida disapproves of. Maud seems to be inebriated and dismissive of Ida's concerns, which may indicate deeper issues in their relationship. The very next morning, Maud walks down the street while pulling a cart behind her. Shortly after, she goes inside a grocery store, observing some items there. Right then, a tall, stern man named Everett enters the store. The shopkeeper is clearly surprised to see him there. He immediately greets Everett. Maud takes notice of this but quietly goes on about her business. Meanwhile, Everett mentions to the shopkeeper that he's in need of a housemaid. This piques Maud's interest, and she carefully listens in on their conversation. Eventually, Everett asks the shopkeeper to put up a sign regarding the same, and the latter readily agrees. Everett is very restless and clumsy, and at one point in their conversation, he even slams the counter. Soon after, the hot-tempered man walks towards a notice board and pins his sign. It's apparent that he doesn't care about how he looks since his shirt is full of holes. Afterwards, he hastily turns back and makes his way out of the store. Meanwhile, Maud, who is still inside the store, slowly approaches the board and proceeds to quietly take his sign with her. She then watches Everett from the store's window as he pushes his cart and walks away. Shortly after, Maud walks down the street and makes her way towards Everett's house. As she arrives at his doorstep, two dogs approach her. Maud is very gentle with them and lovingly pets them before continuing on her way. A while later, Maud knocks on the door and waits patiently for him to answer. Everett quickly opens the door and is quite shocked to see her there. As soon as the door opens, Maud introduces herself. Everett acknowledges her and proceeds to walk out of the house. That's when Maud goes on to explain that she's there for the job that he had posted earlier at the grocery store. Initially, Everett just taunts her and says that he's looking for women. However, Maud simply disregards this comment and proceeds to make him aware that she is one. It's clear that Everett has no interest in hiring her. Now desperate, Maud tries to convince him and suggests they talk over a cup of tea, to which the latter agrees. Shortly after, the two enter the kitchen, where Everett proceeds to make Maud a cup of tea. Soon enough, he serves the tea and takes a seat beside her. At that moment, Maud starts the conversation by asking Everett if the house belongs to him, to which the latter simply answers yes. He then goes on to add that the house previously belonged to a man named Captain John Ryan. As the conversation continues, Maud asks Everett about his occupation. That's when the latter responds that he sells fish, chops wood, and works at an orphanage. Soon after, Maud insists that she wants the job, but Everett isn't convinced. He rudely asks her if she is a cripple, which she hesitantly denies. She then goes on to add that she could do as much work as five other women. 
but Everett doesn't seem to believe her. Meanwhile, she lights a cigarette and inquires about the number of women who applied for the position, but Everett just ignores her. He simply opens the door and suggests that she leave. Upset and anxious, Maud stands up reluctantly and makes one last attempt to persuade him as she leaves. She continues by saying that it would be a long walk and that the kids would throw rocks at her. Hearing this, Everett feels sorry for her and accompanies her for some distance before turning back. As they part ways, Everett can't help but glance back as Maud slowly limps away. The scene then shifts to Everett having food with some children in the orphanage. A while later, he walks outside the place and talks to a man who seems to work there. He tells the man that very few people applied for the job, which astonishes the latter. He's in disbelief that someone even applied. Everett then requests that he take one of the boys from the orphanage instead. However, the man simply denies and suggests he hire the woman who has applied. In response, Everett doesn't say anything and simply proceeds to drive out. The scene then shifts to Everett waiting patiently inside his car for Maud. Shortly after, Maud arrives and approaches the car. Seeing her, Everett informs her of his decision to hire her and advises her to get her belongings. Just then, Ida steps out the door and yells at her to come back inside the house, as she has been neglecting her chores. However, Maud quickly rushes back to her room and starts packing her things. Meanwhile, Ida stands at the door and starts berating her. But Maud isn't bothered and tells her that she's a grown woman, and she'll go off to find her own place. Hearing this, Ida is shocked and tells her that she will not be welcomed at her house if she leaves. However, Maud isn't the least bit worried. She simply grabs her stuff and makes her way out, wishing Ida a fond farewell as she leaves. A while later, Maud sits in the cargo bed of the truck with her belongings, and they drive off. Finally, they arrive at Everett's house. As he enters the door, he notices the fire about to go off in the stove and quickly starts chopping some wood. Meanwhile, Maud, standing behind him, suggests he provide a weekly allowance of 25 cents apart from the room and board. Everett looks at her confused before grumbling and hastily making his way out the door. Shortly after, he returns with some chopped wood and gently places it into the fire. He then stands up and looks at Maud, who asks him if there's anything he'd like her to do. At that moment, Everett rudely tells her that if he stands over her all day, he might as well do it himself. As Everett walks out, Maud puts her paintings in front of a picture frame and cleans the house. The scene then shifts to Maud lighting a lamp at night and carefully looking at something. Just then, Everett steps in and notices her going through his stuff. He doesn't like it at all and confronts her. As he's doing so, he takes notice of the soup that Maud has prepared for him. After inspecting it, he asks her about the soup. That's when Maud shyly replies that it's turnip soup. Inconspicuously, Everett informs her that he doesn't eat turnips. Right then, the grumpy man notices that she hasn't cleaned the table. Enraged, he lashes out at her, saying he's not fond of lazy people. He then throws all her stuff on the floor and yells at her to get out. Maud is clearly heartbroken, so she grabs her stuff and walks out the door. The next morning, Everett gets up and hears some noise downstairs. He makes his way down and is confused to see breakfast on the table while Maud is scrubbing the floor. Everett simply proceeds to drink the coffee and steps outside. After a short while, he leaves for work. Meanwhile, Maud grabs a chicken from the farm as she plans on making chicken soup. As the soup is cooking, she starts unpacking. Just as she slowly places her belongings, she comes across a paint box and starts painting a small ledge on the wall with it. Soon after, Everett steps inside the house and clumsily opens his shoes, throwing them on the floor. As Maud tidily places his shoe, she inquires if he wants any stew. He is surprised and asks her where she got the chicken, to which the latter simply replies that she used the chicken from the farm. Surprised, Everett proceeds to take a seat at the table while Maud brings him a bowl of stew. As he eats, Maud asks him where she'd sleep if she stayed, to which Everett replies with a question asking if she would follow the rules. He then asks her whether she cleaned his bedroom upstairs. In response, Maud simply says that she hasn't. At that moment, Everett goes on to recall his time in the orphanage, where a bunch of kids used to sleep in the same bed. He then bluntly suggests that they share the bed. That night, Maud feels uneasy and can't sleep. The next morning, as Maud is feeding the dogs, Everett confronts her. He rudely tells her that she is worthless than the dogs and chickens. Hearing this, Maud is heartbroken and leaves. She proceeds to make her way towards town, where she sits on the stairs of the grocery store, feeding a cat. Just then, Ida arrives and notices her. She then reveals to Maud how disgusting it is that everyone is talking about Everett locking her up and making her his slave. However, Maud simply smiles and suggests that it would be appropriate for her to marry him. When Ida hears this, she just scoffs and ignores Maud. Just as she's making her way towards the door, Maud lovingly asks her aunt if she'd visit her sometimes, to which Ida rudely answers that she would never and makes her way inside the store. The scene then shifts to Everett driving up to his house. He soon reaches home with one of his friends named Frank. It seems as though he has brought some old furniture on the back of his truck. As they're unloading the furniture, Maud comes over to greet Frank. Frank is surprised to see a woman at Everett's house. Just then, the latter gets grumpy and suggests that Maud get back inside the house. He then goes on to tell Frank that he hired her to guard the house in case it got robbed. Hearing this, Frank taunts him and says he could have just gotten a dog instead of a girl. Everett isn't pleased by this at all. 
Just as Maude is about to go in, Frank comes up to her and introduces himself. The two start conversing, and that's when Maude reveals to him that she not only works there but that she's also living there. Hearing this, Everett is not at all content and again orders Maude to go back inside. Frank then cunningly asks Maude as to where she's sleeping, to which the latter simply reveals that she and Everett share the same bed. At that moment, Everett approaches her and brutally slaps her, yelling at her to get back inside the house. Hurt and miserable, Maude takes a seat at the table, where she takes notice of the paint box from earlier, and proceeds to open it. She then begins to paint the wall beside her with her finger. Shortly after, Everett regrets his actions and goes to check up on Maude. As he approaches the door, he finds her crying miserably and painting. He then impolitely asks her if she's learned her lesson. Angry and frustrated, Maude confronts him and asks him whether he wants her to stay. She then goes on to add that she'll walk out if he doesn't want her. Hearing this, Everett just lowers his head and doesn't say anything. Brusquely, Maude gets up from her seat and demands her pay, as she hasn't been paid even once. Without a word, Everett gives her some money and leaves. Maude then picks up her paintbrush and begins painting the wall again. As time passes, Maude gets new sets of colors, and the walls now have beautiful paintings on them. One day, just as she's about to paint, someone knocks on the door. Maude quickly opens the door and notices a tall, elegant woman standing outside. The woman at the door asks for Everett, to which Maude responds that he's out. The woman then goes on to inform Maude that she paid Everett for fish but never received it. Surprised, Maude defends Everett and tells her that she'll inform him once he's home. She's about to close the door, but that's when the woman notices one of the paintings on the wall. Excited, she asks Maude if she painted them, to which the latter modestly agrees. The two then share a brief conversation, and the woman politely asks for Maude's name. As they shake hands, the woman introduces herself as Sandra before making her way towards the car. A while later, Maude closes the door and continues to paint on the window as the car drives by. Shortly after, Everett arrives and proceeds to eat. While he's eating, he confronts Maude about the paintings on the walls. In response, Maude simply replies that she painted the walls in order to make the house look nice. Hearing this, Everett advises her not to paint the walls where he hangs his clothes, to which she agrees and then proceeds to take a seat beside him. Calmly, she tells him about how her brother Charles used to run a jazz club and how people were always on his back for the money he owed them. She then takes out a piece of paper and begins to write down all his transactions while advising him to do the same. After a while, she steps out of the house, collects a couple of small wooden planks, and heads back inside. She then begins to paint on all the planks. At night, while they sleep, Everett gets close to Maude and pulls her closer to him. At that moment, Maude asks him wittily if they're ready to get married while recalling her brother's extravagant wedding. Now frustrated, Everett gets on top of Maude and demands to know why she is talking about Charles. That's when she goes on to explain that she'll only make love when she gets married, as she doesn't want to go through the hassle again. Confused, Everett inquires about it. Right then, Maude reveals to him that she had a baby before, who eventually passed away because of a deformity. She then goes on to add that her relatives buried the baby without her knowledge while she was sleeping. Hearing this, Everett slowly gets off her as Maude turns away from him. The next morning, the two walk towards Sandra's house to deliver the fish they owe her. As Everett hands over the fish, Maude gives her the piece of paper where they had previously written their transaction. She then goes on to explain that they're rendering accounts so there won't be any more confusion. As Sandra takes a look, she questions them about its authenticity, to which Everett sharply replies that she should take his word for it. Just then, Maude asks if they could start over and keep track of their transactions from now on. Hearing this, Sandra gently smiles and goes back into the house. While they wait, Everett snaps at Maude, telling her that he is the boss as he brings in the money. He then curtly advises her to not talk anymore. Shortly after, Sandra arrives and agrees to pay them only if Maude makes her more of the paintings like the one on the back of the paper. That's when Maude astutely points at Everett and suggests to Sandra that she ask for his approval beforehand. Everett then takes this opportunity to tell Sandra that she should add five more cents for the painting. The latter agrees and even goes as far as to say that she'll pay him 10 more cents instead of 5. Everett hesitates, but Maude readily accepts the offer. With the deal complete, Sandra gives Everett the money and heads back inside the house. Before departing, Maude thanks the kind woman and heads out. While returning home, Maude expresses her distaste towards Everett's demand for more money. However, the latter isn't bothered and just suggests they get to the other houses while pushing his cart. Back home, Maude starts painting with even more joy. Everything is going well as they start to bond with one another. Everett even gets her new paint boxes and encourages her. She finds solace in her art and feels grateful for the newfound companionship. Soon enough, Maude's paintings become more vibrant and lively, reflecting the happiness she feels inside. Maude goes on to make several paintings and sells them all. Her artwork quickly gains popularity, and she now has a loyal following of buyers who eagerly await her next piece. Sometime later, when the two are about to have supper, Everett notices a car pull up to their house. Noticing this, he advises Maude to tell the person to leave, as he doesn't want any visitors during supper. However, Maude isn't too sure about this. Just then, the person knocks on the door. Maude quickly proceeds to answer and realizes that the person is none other than Sandra. The latter politely asks Maude if she can come inside. Unable to deny her, Maude reluctantly invites her in. 
Sandra then proceeds to take a seat before asking Maud for some of her larger paintings. Hesitantly, the latter tells her that she only has small paintings like the ones she provided before. Hearing their conversation, Everett gets up from his chair and proceeds to grab a few of her larger paintings before handing them over to Sandra. As Sandra looks through the paintings, Everett crudely asks how much she will offer for them, to which she suggests he name the price. Everett asks for $5, and they both agree. However, Maud isn't pleased with this and is adamant about not selling her larger painting. She counters by saying that she hasn't completed them yet. Seeing her helpless, Everett returns the money and takes the painting back. Just then, Sandra asks Maud to commission a painting for her and send it to her in New York. Maud takes a quick look at Everett, who signals for her to ask for $5. She acknowledges it and asks Sandra to pay her $5 for the painting. Sandra politely agrees to the request and walks away. Naturally, Maud is thrilled about the deal. Excited, she takes a seat beside Everett and starts having her supper. Time seems to move quickly, and Maud and Everett's bond gets even stronger. Back home, while Maud is painting, she asks for Everett's opinion on her paintings. In response, the latter politely tells her that he knows nothing about paintings and then makes a witty remark. He then asks her about her recent painting, to which Maud simply replies that she's painting a cat. At that moment, Everett notices his name on the paintings and inquires about them. Maud then goes on to explain that she wrote his name because half of it belongs to him now. She even insists that his name be there. However, Everett just ignores her and reminds her not to forget about her housework. Maud quickly agrees to this and continues on with her work. While sitting on the porch, Everett casually mentions he'll help her with some of the housework and starts sweeping. At night, while they are sleeping, Maud gently strokes Everett's hair. Soon, they start to make love, but Everett stops halfway and turns away from her. He then goes back to sleep. The next morning, Maud patiently sits outside the house, gently petting the dogs. That's when Everett shows up and offers her a cup of tea, but she turns it down because she's still mad at him about what happened last night. Realizing that she's angry, Everett sits beside her and reminds her about making love only after marriage. Hearing this, Maud is touched and confesses to Everett that she likes him. However, the latter doesn't even say a word and just looks at her. Shortly after, as Everett gets ready, Maud patiently waits for him. Finally, the two get married, and the only guests are Frank and his mother. As they step out of the church, Maud gently holds Everett's hand while Frank congratulates them. The couple thanks him and then proceeds to make their way out. Later that night, they slowly dance together while embracing one another. Time goes by quickly, and winter sets in. At home, Everett assists Maud in hanging a paintings for sale sign in the window, and they seem to have a good time together. Maud then proceeds to read a newspaper article about herself that suggests that her paintings have gained popularity. The scene then shifts to Maud crossing the street and making her way towards her home. Just as she arrives there, she notices a man standing in front of the place. She politely greets him from behind, and as soon as he turns around, she immediately recognizes him as her brother Charles. Confused, Maud inquires about his presence, to which he responds that he's there to check on her now that she's famous. Afterwards, Maud offers to take him inside for tea, but he politely declines. He then tells her that he is only interested in one of her works. As the conversation progresses, Charles asks Maud about the money she's been making from them and then cunningly suggests that he manage it. Just then, Everett arrives, and Maud introduces him to Charles. In addition, she tells her husband that he has come to purchase one of her paintings. While Charles pretends to decide, Everett gets annoyed and harshly asks him if he's going to purchase a painting. Charles then rushes to the paintings and quickly grabs one after observing Everett. At that point, Maud bumps the price up to $6 from its previous asking price of $5. Charles quickly hands the money over to Maud before wishing her goodbye and driving off. Later, Maud makes her way into the house. While painting, she reveals to Everett that she has received a letter from the United States Vice President. Needless to say, Everett is surprised, but he offers his congratulations nonetheless. Soon after, Maud recommends that once they start making money from her paintings, they should invest in a screen door, which Everett strongly protests. Feeling diminished, he asserts his value to her. The next day, as Maud is painting, Everett walks in with a screen door. Upon seeing this, Maud smiles gleefully and returns to her task. Soon after, Everett installs the door before driving away. As she watches him go, Maud gently gets up from her chair and begins to check the door before looking away with a huge grin. A television team comes to their home shortly after, intending to interview her. Everett cautiously opens the door while they interview Maud, and as he stands behind her, the interviewee respectfully requests that he stand next to her, which he accepts. As the days go by, various television networks conduct interviews with her. Around the same time, Charles and Ida both see her on television and are shocked by her accomplishments. Some more days pass by, and numerous people start visiting their house, as Maud is quite popular by now. However, Everett doesn't like it, so he just sits inside the house and avoids all of them. One day, Everett runs into Ida while she is being walked to her car. The latter quickly recognizes Everett and tells him how lucky he is to be with someone like Maud. It seems as though she now feels guilty for treating Maud rather poorly. Just as Everett is about to walk away, Ida requests that he tell Maud to come see her. 
Back home, Everett tells Maude all about Ida and even states the fact that she looked quite sickly. Maude is stunned to hear this and immediately starts to get ready. Confused, Everett asks her as to where she's going. That's when Maude replies that she wants to go visit her aunt. Everett immediately refuses the request, but Maude is adamant. Enraged, she walks out of the house and goes straight to her aunt's home. There, the two start talking. Ida praises Maude for her talent and even says that she's the only one in the family who ended up happy. Hearing this, Maude smiles. However, Ida doesn't look as pleased. She complains about how she's passing away, and how her life is just full of regrets. Right at that moment, Ida guiltily admits that Maude's baby was never deceased or deformed. The baby was quite healthy. However, soon after she was born, Charles sold her. When Maude hears this, she is devastated. Breathing heavily, she asks Ida as to why they do this to her. That's when the latter replies that the baby was sold to a good home with an old couple. They did this because they thought that Maude would never be able to take care of a child. Ida then continues on by saying the child is well loved and well taken care of. Anxious and heartbroken, Maude timidly asks Ida if her baby was born crooked too. However, the latter simply replies that the baby is quite healthy with no complications whatsoever. Hearing this, Maude quietly gets up and leaves. She walks back home while sniffling and wiping her tears away. Just then, Everett arrives at the scene with his car. Maude quickly gets in and wipes all her tears. It's obvious that the news has devastated her. Upset, she tries to tell her husband about this, but it appears as though Everett is mad too. Enraged, he starts complaining about how miserable his life is because of her. He then continues on by saying that he hates being in the public eye. Everett even goes so far as to say that he is better off without her. After hearing all this, Maude is completely broken. She steps out of the vehicle and walks away, crying. Meanwhile, Everett hurriedly drives away. Desperate, Maude reaches Sandra's house for emotional support. She really needs someone to rely on. Maude timidly knocks on the door, and Sandra opens it happily. However, the latter quickly notices Maude's distress. She immediately invites her in, and soon the two start talking. When Maude finally starts feeling better, Sandra asks her for help. She expresses that she wants to learn how to paint. However, that's when Maude says that you can't just teach someone how to paint. She then goes on to add that art just comes to her. All she needs is a brush, a window, and nature to create a masterpiece. On the other hand, Everett finally starts missing Maude. He quietly goes to work, where Frank mockingly asks him what's wrong. That's when Everett says that Maude has now left him for good. Frank just laughs at this and says that no one could tolerate him for long. As the days pass, Maude and Everett both start missing each other a lot. The two reminisce about moments spent with one another. Unable to stay away anymore, Everett drives to Sandra's house in order to get Maude back. Shortly after, the two sit on a swing and confess their love for one another. Everett finally expresses just how much he loves Maude and apologizes for treating her badly. He goes on to talk about how she can do so much better than him. However, that's when Maude assures Everett that she only wants him and that she's got everything she wants with him. The two finally proceed to go back home. At least that was what Maude had thought. However, she is shocked to see Everett stop in front of a massive white house. Confused, Maude asks her husband as to why they've stopped. That's when the latter responds by saying that the house actually belongs to her daughter, who is now all grown up. Hearing this, Maude gets really emotional. She slowly gets out of the car and looks towards the house. At that moment, a young, beautiful girl walks out and sits on the front steps. It turns out that the girl is none other than Maude's daughter, whom she had presumed to be dead all these years. As Maude watches her daughter walk back into the house, she slowly gets into the car as well. Finally, she and Everett return home. Later that night, Maude keeps on talking about how beautiful her daughter is and how she's just the most perfect girl in the world. Everett simply agrees to all this and goes back to sleep. Soon, months pass by and seasons change. It's freezing cold now, with snow covering almost every nook and cranny. As time progresses, Maude starts to get sick. She can't walk anymore, and her hands are shakier than usual. Worried, Everett takes her to the doctor, who tells Maude that she has emphysema. He strictly advises her not to smoke anymore. Additionally, Maude complains about having arthritis. She says that she can't even hold a brush anymore. Hearing this, the doctor hands her some medicine and leaves. Once everything is settled down, Everett hands Maude a cup of tea. The latter happily takes it and proceeds to drink it. She then advises Everett to start adopting dogs. This is because she knows that she won't be alive any longer. Everett realizes this as well, so he starts to get emotional. Soon after, the two get on with their lives while also spending a lot of time together. One day, while painting, Maude gets extremely sick. She can't breathe anymore, so Everett quickly rushes her to the hospital. Once there, the doctors try their best and somehow manage to help Maude. However, this doesn't last long. After coming back to her senses, Maude bids Everett goodbye and tells him that she's grateful for being loved. In turn, Everett sobs in pain while his wife takes her last breath. After Maud passes away, Everett walks out of the hospital and gets in his car. He drives back home and looks at his empty house. All the paintings there remind him of Maud. Emotional, he starts looking through her stuff, and that's when he finds the sign he had first posted at the grocery store. He smiles at the sign, remembering that it was the very reason he and Maud initially met. The movie finally ends with the real-life footage of Maudie and Everett Lewis, who live together in their small house, full of paintings.